بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <تصفيق> درسنا اليوم الدرس الرابع في chapter 4 بعنوان existence and uniqueness and the nearly independence بالأول رحين نناقش existence and uniqueness للسلوشن وبعدين رحين نحكي عن the nearly independence ومفهوم الرينوسكين خلينا نبدأ الآن بال existence وال uniqueness theorem The theorem says that consider the initial value problem y w prime plus p x y prime plus q of x y equals to g of x. So we have here a second order linear differential equation with conditions y at x naught y zero and y prime at x naught equals y one, where x naught in an interval a b. If p of x, q of x, and g of x, so the coefficients of y prime, y, and the free coefficient are continuous on the interval a, b, then the initial value problem has unique solution on a, b. So only we need to check the continuity of the coefficients for the linear differential equation. But remember that we have here the coefficient is 1 so the leader coefficient for general case the leader coefficient of y to the power derivative n is 1 and the other coefficients all are continuous then we guarantee that the solution unique and exist on the interval a b let's consider the following example so the example says find the largest interval on which the initial value problem given by the equation x y w prime minus 1 over x times x minus 3 y prime Oh, here I have a mistake. I'm um, gonna fix it. So the equation is x y w prime minus one over x minus three y prime plus x squared over natural log of x minus one y equals x squared subject to the conditions y of 3 over 2 is 2 and y prime of 3 over 2 is negative 1 so find the largest interval on which the initial value problem has a unique solution Okay, solution. So, so we applied the theorem here. We applied the theorem. Y double prime p y prime plus q y equals to g of x. So this is the standard form. This is the standard form here, and. We need only to check the continuity of the coefficients p of x, q of x, and g of x. So go back again for the equation. The equation is not in the standard form, so I have to divide over x here. So dividing over x, we convert the equation into the standard form. So let's go back here to the equation minus 1 over so sorry, times x minus 3 times y prime now also divide the third term and if we cancel x we get natural log of x minus 1 times y equals to x so here is p of x P of x and here's q of x so 
and finally here's geopex so I have three functions and I need to find the largest interval AB on which the function is continuous and the point 3 over 2 belongs to so it's very clear that the function p of x is continuous except the zeros of the denominator so I'm first of all looking for the zeros of the denominator so we solve this equation and this is very clear that gives the roots 0 and 3 so we have to exclude these two roots so let's imagine that this is the real line that we are working on so here I'm excluding two points 0 and 3 so here I'm excluding this point and this point so the function is continuous everywhere except 0 and 3 now number 2 q of x now is continuous for all x's in the domain of the function and domain the function we have to exclude the zeros of the denominator so the denominator must be non-zero so let's see when this becomes zero this becomes zero if we take exponential for both sides we get x minus one equals one so at x equals 2 so I have to exclude 2 so here's 2 also I have to exclude 2 also we know that the logarithm function is continuous whenever x minus 1 is positive so only we can take x greater than 1 so x less than or equal to 1 makes the function discontinuous so here's one and equals to one so also I excluding all this interval so the rest here still valid now number three the function Q, g of x is continuous everywhere so continuous everywhere So there is no problem. Now, so I have one interval from 1 to 2 and the other interval from 2 to 3, the last interval from 3 to infinity. But I have to choose now the interval including the initial point 3 over 2. So 3 over 2, 1 half, belongs actually to the interval here. So here's the number. 3 so the largest interval that I can choose so that 3 over 2 belongs to is 1 2 so here's the largest interval the largest interval is 1 2 otherwise we will not guarantee the existence and uniqueness of the solution now we go to the next part of the class which is the linear independence So now we start with the definition of linearly independence or linearly dependence. So we say two functions f1 of x, f2 of x are called linearly dependent is the concept linearly dependent on an interval a b if one of them is a constant multiple of the other so ie for example f of x is a constant multiple of f of 2x on a b so otherwise we say that f1 and f2 are linearly independent so if we cannot write one of them as a constant multiple of the other so otherwise we say f1 of x and f2 of x are linearly independent independent 
So here's also, we're going to highlight the concept linearly independence. Now, we can define what we mean by linearly dependent set of functions in general. So number two, so a finite set of functions f1, f2, f n is called linearly independent on an interval a, b if at least one of them is a linear combination of the others, i.e. one of them, for example, I'm going to choose f n, but it doesn't matter, any one of them can be written as a linear combination, so it is c1, f1 of x plus c2, f2 of x plus C n minus one F n minus one of X on A B. If this not happen, so otherwise they called linearly independent. Let's take the following example about linearly independence and linearly dependence. Show that f1 of x equals x squared uh, sine squared x f2 of x equals cosine 2x and f3 of x equals to 4 are linearly dependent on the whole real line from negative infinity to infinity. So the only thing that we have to show is to write one of them as a linear combination of the others. I'm going to start with this function and using the identity sine squared x, it equals 1 plus or minus cosine 2x over 2. So, using this identity, or otherwise you can say, if you wish, cosine 2x, it equals 1 minus 2 times, so all, also you can use cosine 2x, it equals 1 minus 2 sine squared of x, so either one of them, so I can write the function here as a combination of the constant function from this constant and sine squared, so using this or this whatever, so here, if we use this now, f3 of x is a combination of, so one, it comes from multiplying one-fourth times f3 3 so here's f2 let me fix it so here's f2 sorry about that so here's f2 which is cosine it equals one fourth f3 so one fourth times four it's one now sine squared so i multiply by negative two f1 of x so is c1 is one fourth and c2 is negative 2, so I wrote two of these functions, uh, the function f2 as a linear combination of the others, and this is valid actually for all x in the real line, so they are linearly dependent. Now another example shows that the functions sine of x and x are linearly independent on the interval negative infinity to infinity. So we have to show we never can write one of them as a linear combination of the other. So if sine of x equals constant times x on the whole real line from negative infinity to infinity, then this statement is true for all values of x. Now let's choose one value of x. In particular, I'm going to use pi of x, pi. So choosing x to be pi, then this statement becomes sine of pi equals 
sine of pi equals now c times pi but c times pi equals sine pi implies that 0 equals c times pi and this enforce c to be 0 so plug 0 here in the statement above we get sine of x equals 0 and sine of x equals to 0 of course for all x in the interval negative infinity to infinity but this is not true so we cannot find such a constant and we prove that sine of x x are linearly independent now my question is is there any other way to prove functions are linearly independent other than using the definition and the answer is yes we can use the Renault scan so what is the Renault scan the Renault scan by the definition here is actually the determinant of function so let me now read the formal definition let y1 y2 y3 up to y n be n minus 1 times differentiable functions on a b we define the Renoskian function on a b by the Renoskian of y1 up to y n to be the determinant of the n by n matrix where the first row is the functions y1, y2, yn and the second row will be the first derivative of these functions and the third row will be the second derivative of these functions and so on up to n where will be the n minus 1 derivative for these functions for example if we have two functions then the Renoskian of y1, y2 will be the determinant of y1, y2, y1 prime, y2 prime which is y1 times y2 prime minus y2 times y1 prime now for the example <coughs> here given three functions y1 x y2 is e to the power x and y3 e to the minus power x find the Renault scan of y1 y2 and y3 so actually the Renault scan is the determinant as follow so it is the determinant of the first row will be the function x e to the power x e to the power minus x and the second row will be the derivative of these three functions so it is 1 e to the x minus e to the minus x finally the last row will be the second derivative which is 0 e to the x e to the minus x so now we compute the derivative the determinant of these three functions sorry the determinant of the matrix which is 3 by 3 so I'm using the first row here so it's Remember how to compute the Renoskian or the determinant. So I'm using now the first row. So I'm multiplying x by the determinant now of this matrix here. So the determinant will be e to the power x times e to the power minus x, which is 1 minus e to the power x times minus e to the power minus x so it is minus minus 1 becomes now 1 minus now for the second enter in the first row now multiplying by the matrix here the determinant of the matrix here now so 1 times e to the power minus x e to the minus power x now minus 0 and finally we use the last entry e to the minus x now times the matrix here for the first column and the second column so 1 times e to the power x it is e to the power x minus 0 and we can simplify so I get 2x now e to the x times e to the minus x which is minus 1 plus finally e to the minus x e to the x which is 1 so the answer is 2x so here's the Renoskian as a function of x is 2x which is now valid for all x from negative infinity to infinity so here's the example of course if we have now 
asked you to find the Renault scheme for two functions, now the computations becomes easier because you have only two functions to determine of matrix two by two. Now the following theorem is called the test for linearly independence. Again, a test for linearly independence. It is not for linearly dependence. So we only use theorem, this theorem to testify if functions are linearly independent. Let y1, y2 be differentiable functions on a, b. Then, if y1, y2 are linearly dependent in a, b, then the Reynolds can is zero for all x in a, b. For a moment, let's see why this is true now here. I'm just clarify it. So y2, it equals cy1 or uh, c y1 equals c times y2, whatever. So here's y2 prime is cy1 prime. So now I can compute the Renoskian of y1, y2 by computing the determinant of y1, y2, y1 prime, y2 prime, which is now equal to y1 is y1 and y2 is cy1 and y1 prime is y1 prime and is cy1 prime and this equals to cy1 y1 prime minus cy1 y1 prime which is zero so here again we have zero Renoskian for linearly dependent functions as a corollary for this so if the Renoskian is not zero for at least one x naught then the functions are linearly independent so the functions are linearly independent so we can use this test to Now, if these two functions are linearly independent, also I will mention that this actually, this fact can be applied for n functions. So, n functions are linearly dependent, then the Reynolds scan is zero. As a corollary, if the Reynolds scan is not zero for at least one x naught, then the n functions are linearly independent so let's see now example to apply on this theorem show that the functions t t squared t cubed are linearly independent on the interval negative infinity to infinity so we're going to use the test so we compute the low scan for these functions i'm going to call it w of t so the low scan will be the determinant of t t squared t cubed, the second row will be 1, 2, t, 3, t squared, the last row will be the second derivative, which is 0, 2, 6, t. So now the determinant will be, I'm using the first row, t times, now the, the determinant of 2t times 6, t will be 12, t squared minus 6, t squared now minus, I'm going to use the second entry in the first row, t squared times now the determinant 1 times 6t, b 6t minus 0. Finally, plus t cubed times now, I'm going to compute the determinant 1 times 2 is 2 minus 0. So the answer will be 12 t squared minus 6 t squared will be 6, 6 t squared times t, then the answer 6 t cubed. Now we have minus 6 t cubed plus 2 t cubed, so the answer is 2 t cubed. And this actually is not exactly 0 for all values, so at least I need one value. So at least w of 1 is 2 so it is not 0 now as the test says if the Reynolds can at least for at least one point is not 0 then the functions are linearly independent on 
the interval negative infinity to infinity. So it is very easy to apply for independent functions. Let's take another example now. Given that y1, y2 are linearly dependent on the interval 0 infinity, one of the following is true. So the first statement says that the Renoskin of y1, y2 equals the reciprocal of the Renoskin of y1, y2. Sorry, it is actually y2, y1. So here's y2, y1. So the Renault scan of y1, y2 equals to 1 over Renault scan of y2, y1. Or the statement in B, the Renault scan of y1, y2 equals to 0. And C, the Renault scan of y1, y2 always equals to y1 prime. Finally, the Renault scan of y1, y2 equals to 1. So now we know that functions are linearly dependent. So from the theorem, if these are two linearly dependent, then we must have a Renault scan to be zero, but we cannot guarantee that the Renault scan equals one over the Renault scan of y2, y1. Of course, y1 equal, y2 equals to zero, then the Renault scan of y2, y1 equals to, uh, to zero, so one over zero never can be one, so the statement is false, and y1, y2, most can equals y1 prime, I can find many questions, many functions, doesn't satisfy, uh, doesn't satisfy this relation. So, finally, also I can find many, many functions, so that the most can y1, y2 is not one. So the only thing that I can conclude is y1, y2, the Renault scan of y1, y2 is 0. Now, other question now, here's a tricky question. So, true or false? True or false? If, now the Renault scan of two functions y1, y2 is 0, then we can say y1, y2 are linearly dependent. the interval for which the Renault scan is zero. Now, so the answer, if I use the test above here, is the test. If y1 and y2 are linearly dependent, then the Renault scan is zero. If the Renault scan is not zero, at least for one point, then these are linearly independent, but nothing saying that if the Renault scan is zero, then these are linearly dependent, so I cannot use the test. So, is if the Renault scan is zero, then y1 and y2 are linearly dependent, the answer is false. It is not true in general. It is not true. The only thing that I know, if the Renault scan is not zero, then these are linearly independent. If these are linearly dependent, then the Renault scan is zero. And here I will give you one example to justify this statement. So here's the example. Consider now the functions. So take y1 to be, let's take t times absolute value of t and y2 to be here, I'm going to take the other function will be t squared, and both of them are defined on negative infinity to infinity. So I'm asking you now to show that the Renault scan is zero while these are linearly independent. So two functions are linearly independent with Renault scan is zero. So first, we claim that the Renault scan of y1, y2 is 0, and this is true for all t in negative infinity to infinity. So, but remember that Renault scan at every t is the determinant of y1, y2 
y1 prime y2 prime so let's find first y1 prime y2 prime of course y2 prime is just only 2t now here to compute y1 prime i'm gonna write y1 as a function without using the absolute value notation so this is just t squared whenever t is greater than or equal to zero it's minus t squared whenever t is less than zero so here i can find now y1 prime will be 2t if t greater than zero and negative 2t if t is less than zero now at zero the derivative from right is zero, the derivative from left is zero, so I can say it is zero, so uh, the derivative at zero still 2t or negative 2t, whatever. So here, y1 prime of t, I can write it in now using absolute value notation, it is two absolute value of t. So now here, go back to the Renoiskian. So the Renoiskian at y1, y2, or I call it Renoiskian of t is y1 times y2 prime so y1 is t absolute value of t times t2 prime which is 2t minus now y2 times y1 prime so y2 is t squared and y1 prime we just found it's 2 times absolute value of t and this equals to t squared absolute value of t minus 2 t squared absolute value of t which is 0 for all t but these functions are linearly independent so let's see why these functions are linearly independent if y1 y2 are linearly dependent the interval negative infinity to infinity then we can write one of them as a linear combination of the other so at least we can write c1 times y1 plus c2 times y2 equals to zero for at least c1 or c2 is not zero this is actually equivalent to say uh, y1 equals minus c2 over c1 if c1 is not zero so i can write one of them as a linear combination of the other so assume that this is true so we have c1 t absolute value of t plus c2 t squared equals to zero this is for all t now let's take t equals to 1 for example I have c1 plus c2 equals to 0 if I take t equals minus 1 then I get minus c1 plus c2 equals to 0 but if I solve this system now the only solution is c1 equals c2 equals to 0 so I never can write one of them as a linear combination of the other in other way or I'm going to use the other method so if c1 equal if y1 equals c times y2 then t absolute value of t equals c times t squared for all c and if this is true so at t equals negative one we have negative one equals c at t equals to one we have one equals to c and this means that either one equals to negative one or i can say negative c equals to c and this is never can be the case because otherwise c equals to zero and we plug c so y1 equals zero times y2 which is equals to zero but this is not true because y1 is t times absolute value of t so in either method either this method or this method no way to find the constant so that y1 equals c y2 or y2 equals c times y1 so it never can be linearly dependent so y1 y2 are linearly independent
so again here I'm emphasizing that you cannot use the test for linearly dependence only you can use the test for linearly independence so now here the statement is about the test for linearly dependence and linearly independence so here's the statement let y1 y w prime plus p x y prime plus q x y equals g of x so a linear differential equation of higher order where p q and g are continuous on a b if y1 <coughs> y2 are solutions to the differential equation then the Reynolds scan is zero if and only if y1 and y2 are linearly independent. The Reynolds scan is not zero if and only if y1 and y2 are linearly independent. So dependent if it is zero, independent if it is not zero. So we have test for both dependency and linearly dependent functions. Now we give the definition of fundamental solution set. So a fundamental solution set to a given nth order linear differential equation is n linearly independent solutions y1 up to yn. So a set set to be fundamental solution set to a given differential equation if number one the number of solutions equal n. So the number of solutions equal n, which is the order of the differential equation number two. These n solutions are linearly independent. So I have to have two conditions for fundamental solution set. Let's take the following example. Find the fundamental solution set to the equation y triple prime minus 3y double prime minus 4y prime equals to 0. So here's the solution. First I'm going to find three solutions for this equation. So the characteristic equation or the auxiliary equation is r cubed minus 3r squared minus 4r equals to 0. If we factor out r, we have r times r squared minus 3r minus 4 equals to 0. And this implies that we have r times r minus 4 times r plus 1 equals to 0. So I have three different roots, 0, minus 1, and 4. So I have three solutions y1 equals e to the power 0 which is 1 y2 e to the power minus t and y3 equals e to the power 4t now we claim that these solutions are linearly independent I have three solutions which are linearly independent if we prove that the linearly independency condition, then the fundamental solution set will be 1 e to the minus t e to the power 4t. So let's compute now the Renoskian because these are solutions, so I can use the test. The solutions are independent <coughs> if and only if the Renoskian is not zero. Mm -hmm. So the Renoskian for y1, y2, y3 is the determinant of the matrix 1 e to the minus t e to the 4t 0 minus e to the minus t 4 e to the 4t and 0 e to the minus t 16 e to the 4t now to compute the determinant I'm going to use the first row so we have the determinant equals 1 times now, minus 16e to the power 3t minus 4e to the power 3t, which comes from the product between the diagonal and the secondary diagonal, and this equals minus 20e to the 3t, and this is not zero at all. So these are linearly independent. Now, so we have a fundamental set, which is 1, 
e to the minus t e to the 4t is the fundamental set. Solution set. Now here, I'll give you exercise for you. So the exercise says that show that t squared t to the minus 2 is a fundamental solution set to the differential equation t squared y w prime plus t y prime minus 4y equals to 0. Actually, this is Euler Cauchy equation on 0 infinity and find the general solution. So remember that you have to show that first of all t squared t minus 2 are actually solutions to the differential equation number two you have to show these are linearly independent then the general solution if you have two linearly independent solutions the solution the general solution will be y equals so if you have two linearly independent remember that y equals c1 y1 plus c2 y2 is the general solution so using this fact now you can answer the exercise. We take now another example. Suppose that x x cubed, the set is fundamental solution set to the differential equation y w prime p x y prime plus q x y equals to zero. And also suppose that f of x is a solution to the initial value problem, the same equation with the conditions y at one is zero, y prime at one is one find f of two so remember that f is a solution so because x and x cubed is a fundamental set then x and x cubed are linearly independent solutions but we have a fact says that if we have two linearly independent then the the solution the general solution is just a linear combination of these two linearly independent solutions so i have now here the general form for the solution so c1 x plus c2 x cubed so here's the general solution now if i have the general solution then of course i can find the initial value problem solution so only thing that i have here now f of one is zero and f the prime of one is one because y is the solution for the initial and f x is the solution for the initial so f x is y now using these conditions to find c1 c2 so f the prime of x is c1 plus 3 c2 x squared now if we use f of 1 is 0 it means that 0 plus 0 so I have here sorry f of 1 is 0 so I have c1 plus c2 so this is the first equation now using f the prime of 1 is 1 so 1 equals to c1 plus 3c2 so we have two equations 0 equals c1 plus c2 and 1 equals c1 plus 3c2 so solve these two equations by substitution or by using elimination what we have is c2 equals minus c1 so plug in the other equation then we find that c2 is one half so we have c1 is minus one half and so the solution for the initial value problem is minus one half x plus one half x cubed now we can answer the question that to find f of two so f of two is minus one plus four which is three let's take another example which of the following is the nearly independent set cosine squared x and one plus cosine two x Number two, x squared minus three x squared. Number three, e to the minus x, e to the power one plus x. And finally, number four, e to the minus x, one minus e to the one minus x. So remember that 
remember that we know that if the Renault scan is not zero then these are linearly independent and if y2 equals c times y1 then the set of functions are dependent so we're going to use these two facts so let's take number one so of course number one we have cosine squared x equals one half times one plus cosine two x so we have so for number one we have f1 equals c times f2 so these are dependent so linearly dependent number two so it's also very clear that minus 3x squared it is minus 3 times x squared so we have f2 equals minus 3 times f1 so also it is dependent and now for number 3 we have e to the minus x and we have e times e to the minus x so there is no constant multiple of the function e to the x gives e to the minus x so let's now try to see the Renoiskian of e to the minus x e to the 1 plus x and we can find e to the minus x e to the 1 plus x and minus e to the minus x e to the 1 plus x this equals to now the product it gives now e to the minus x times e1 plus x so it is e minus minus it becomes now plus e to the minus x also e which is now 2e this is never can be zero at least i need this to be not zero at x naught but this is actually not zero for all x so these are independent independent so the answer is a three let's make sure that four is dependent so 4 is e to the minus x, 1 minus e to the 1 minus x, so number 4, e to the minus x, and e to the 1 minus x is number 4, so we can write e to the 1 minus x as e times e to the minus x, so I have here a constant e times f2, so these are dependent. So the answer for this question is number three. So the answer is number three. بالنهاية بشكر الجميع للاستماع وإن شاء الله تكون استفدتوا من الأمثلة الموجودة أرجو من الجميع العودة للكتاب وحل الأمثلة بخصوص هذا الدرس وإلى اللقاء في الدرس الآخر.